No niin, tervetuloa tänne uuden sarjan pariin nimeltä Junnu 360. Ja niin kuin näkyy, me ollaan nyt 360 Helsingin keskustassa. Ja tämä sarja tulee viemään teidät paikkoihin, mihin te ette normaalisti pääsis. Ja tämä ensimmäinen jakso ja ensimmäinen osa vie teidät Opus Deen päämajaan Roomassa, missä on maanalainen krypta, missä on maanalainen kirkko, mihin on haudattu ihmisiä, missä on, mistä kuullaan ihan uskomattomia tarinoita, miten opuste ei synty ja miten siitä tuli niin iso asia. Ah, you need to cover just, this. Uh, yeah, 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 I'm sorry. Just, I'm just, sorry. Just, no, I didn't remember. Yeah, don't yeah, worry. Yeah. It's, it's always like this in every, every church, every church, church here. here. So, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much. You can make yourself comfortable. We have uh, <laughs> 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 chaos. We have this uh, little room if you need to leave. No, somewhere. I'm fine. Okay. Anna mulla passu, anna se tarvitsee sun puhelin, mutta ne varmaan. So, um, well, you do know I've been more of the work, yes? Mm -hmm. You do what I was Yes, yes. So, uh, I was saying is, uh, was funded by the minister of St. Joseph Maria. He's the uh, this um, street. So, um, he was 26 years old. He, well, uh, He was not very clear what it was, but he started this, the the um, the sermonet of his vocation. Once he went uh, 15 years old, he saw a, a mom uh, walking in the in the snow without shoes. So this was very like touching for him, and he said like, if this man is capable of doing this because of Christ, then what might Christ want up for me? So this started like a, a long, like 10 years of discernment of what God might be asking for him. So he was usually saying this prayer, Domina Obidian, Domina Utsit, and it's like, uh, Lord, may I see, Our Lady, may I do, or may I be. So for 10 years, he will be like repeating and repeating and repeating this, this little prayer. And he, well, he became the priest, but understanding that maybe, may, being like uh, being a priest, he would understand better what God wanted from him. But he was very clear that it was not just to be the priest. So on the second of October of maybe twenty eight, he had this light, or like he understood finally what God wanted from him, and it was like to remember the world that we were capable, that we have to, we. Yeah, we are called to be saints in ordinary life. So to remember something that was essential for Christianism, that it was the first Christians were like tenders and were farmers and were lawyers and were into the were in the centers of Rome. So Christians were around the world doing what everybody does, and they were being saints and they were living their Christianity with a lot of courage. But this was like forgotten through the years because of well the spread of Christianism, that there was the relax of the moral and everything. So people thought that just being a nun or a priest or um, uh, you could be seen. So God kind of wanted us to remember that no, that we are really called to be saints in ordinary life. Like not doing anything special, but to do everything we do for love of people and for love of Christ and looking um, on the example of Christ. Like, doing most of the stuff. So he understood, like at the first he thought that he had to join this group, but he didn't find any group. Because what he found is like everybody was doing vows or something. And he said, no, no, it's like nothing different from baptism. Like it, I don't need to do something else to live a really faithful and complete Christian life um, and looking forward to be a saint. So finally he understood that he has to found Opus Dei as an institution that their members, what would do is to just um, spread this message, but that 
but it's not that only members of Opus Dei have to be saying, not that everybody has to be saying, but it's like the members of Opus Dei uh, have the compromise to remind this to other people through um, poetry uh, and through <laughs> and through and through doctrine. So to help us to be uh, to be good Christians. So that's Opus Dei basically. So it's mm -hmm. like. Yeah, everybody. So uh, he, uh, see, sorry, I'm telling all the story just to know why you're Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, very it's good. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because she knows nothing, so okay, this yeah. is excellent. <laughs> okay, so it's, yeah, to understand, like, um, so why is it like, yeah, and so in, in this development of, of this new charisma in the church, you need to have the approbation of the local church first and then from the, the Pope. So he he started like um, spreading this message in in Madrid, like all around Spain. But then he saw that this message was not just for Spaniards; that this was a universal call to sanity. So um, he had the, he needed the approval of the church. So he had to come to Rome, and so he comes to Rome, and he will be living very close to Vatican to uh, explain to the Pope and the Church like what was Opus Dei, the message of Opus Dei. So finally, they approved Opus Dei, and then it's called like the Vergadura, uh, the Vulture of Opus Dei. But well, he comes to Rome, and also because he understood that um, all Christians, as we are connected to the Church, and in the Church, the Pope is the head. We are all Romans in that sense. So he also understood like the heart of Opus Dei had to be here in Rome because it means also universally uh, open to everyone. So he will start living. This was at first where little little department, and it was like the um, the embassy of Bulgaria, I think. So they bought like a little little space, and then they will start like buying a little by little the rest. But he wanted to have a church in which um, everybody could come and pray and he wanted to uh, put us an advocate to our lady of peace because she, he said like the like the fight for sanity in our lives it just brings peace so that's a santa Maria of us and as well um as opposite is also called to be in our in everywhere and in every country he also understood that they don't have to be different from a normal house. He, I don't know if you know any houses of Opus Dei. Yes, in Helsinki. Uh, I have been at Oscar's birthday party. So from the outside and the inside, they are not different from other houses. They are yes, so, but and, there was a chapel inside. Uh, and, so, uh, so the same here. Yeah, so uh, so it's the real, real like as women houses of uh, that time. And also the we're going to go in now into the chapel. And it tries to bring up what the churches here in Rome are that are little basilicas. So he tries to imitate also the three navies of the basilica and the columns and the abside. So it's very, very Roman, but in a little, little, tiny, very tiny. So just before getting in, um, so he also wants to, to um, this culture, he did three images. She is called the Our Lady of Purity, of Fair Love, for Fair Love, um, or in Italian, no, Latin is Our Mother Bolte Relaxionis. So he asked this culture to set the Our Lady to have a flower in her hands because he used to say that that's how Our Lady does with our lives. So she brings up our hearts and she offers it to to our Lord, and he's with the like um, seeming to be blessing our hearts. So he understood that to love, um, really to love with truth to everybody, you have to have pure hearts, and that's nothing but to have them very big to everyone. And that pure love is needed in a, in, in a marriage uh, as, um, uh, sorry, the words not good. It was like in celibato, well, um, well, and people that uh, not get married or... Celibato. Yeah, but like uh, the creative part, what does is to teach us to know how to love in truth. But so he wanted also like to be have this candle always um, burning, um, like a constant prayer for the hearts of all the people in the world. So this all I need for love. 
and yeah, it's like also like a human size image. Also like it calls you like to, I don't know, like to be like very close to her and to also offer all of your like children uh, of our hearts and our lives. So okay, now we're gonna go inside. Oh, I have all the coffee for the hand and I don't know that. So, um, so, yeah, so it's fine. There is no light. Um, yes, there is. Uh, 
Civil War in Spain that caused a lot of fights. And um, it was the communism and anarchism uh, against the, um, the, the, the um, sorry, the, um, the government. The government. Thousands of priests are like uh, 191 in a night. So um, one of the priests that we're looking for, or it was in the list to be killed, was a Um So it was a really, really tough time. So he will be like two years hiding from from Manikuni to the to um, to our house, just moving around. And until one point, he decides to cross um, to France. But in, so this is just bring us to the place where he was born, it's Adrastrum. He was very close to um, Barcelona, where it was like very, very heavy, this um, anti clericalism feeling. So they destroyed it, most of all the churches. And this was the, where he was baptized. So they burned the church and they broke the, the, the baptism baptism and throw it to the to the river. So once then when they found it they they obviously didn't know what to do. So they asked some um the father like sons of No niin, tässä oli osa yksi. Toivottavasti nautitte tästä. Ja tota osa kakkosta todellakin kannattaa odottaa, koska siinä me päästään tänne opusteen kirkkoon tai katedraali, miksi sä haluat kutsua sitä, joka on maan alla, joka näyttää siltä, kun se olisi maan päällä, koska siellä on ikkunat. Siellä on opusteen käyttämiä aseita, mitä he joutuivat käyttämään, tota, kun he tota, pakeni, kun he joutuivat taistelemaan, on miekkoja, on vaikka mitä. Sitten on tämä legendaarinen ruusu, mikä antoi opusteen perustajalle Jumalalta viestin, että hänen kuuluu jatkaa hänen matkaa. Ja myös päästään kryptaan, mihin on haudattu ihmisiä. Ja on myös toinen pieni kappeli siellä maan alla. On paavin asua, on vaikka mitä, mutta kaikkea ei vielä tässä osa kakkosessa sitten tuu, vaan tästä tulee noin kolme tai neljä osaa. Ja tulee myös kaikkea mielenkiintoista muuta esille. Mutta tilatkaa, tykätkää, toivottavasti piditte tästä ja nähdään sitten kakkososan parissa. Kiitos.